Hey everyone, it's Jeff the IT Guy. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 2018 MacBook Air. And yes, I know the 2020 is out. You know, they've made some changes to it. They've added extra storage for the base model. So it doubles from 128 to 256. And they changed the processor from 8th gen to 10th gen. However, and they even lowered the price for the base model. However, the, the 2018 is the one I have. Uh, got it on sale. You'll be expecting to see this one on sale quite a bit. And that being said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at this bad boy. But we're going to look at it from a professional developer and content creation perspective, right? So we know um, what the MacBook Air can do as far as it goes for, you know, just tooling around on the internet, watching YouTube videos, things like that. We know, you know, that it's a great Right, so we know that the MacBook Air is a great machine for watching YouTube videos, for doing classwork, for doing you know, schoolwork, writing papers, etc. However, like I said, we want to look at it as how far, how a professional would use it. You know, we want to look at it and see how well it can be used for developers or content creators, uh, photographers, etc. I don't do photography, so I can't really give you anything on that. However, if you're interested in this kind of content, if you're interested in seeing how machines perform for professionals, if you're interested in IT career advice, as well as reviews and tutorials, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know some things that you would like to see if you have any questions. And, uh, you know, leave a like if you want to. Leave a like if you don't want to. Um, you know, that's completely up to you. However, if you want to be notified, go ahead and subscribe. And so let's get into talking about the MacBook Air. The 2018 model. So this is the the one I have is the base model, right? So it's got 128 gig SSD. It's got 1.6 gigahertz dual core Retina display. You know it does have Touch ID, so that's really nice. And it doesn't have a Touch Bar, which is fantastic to me because I I hate the Touch Bar. I really do. I've got it on my 13 inch MacBook Pro. I've had it on a 15 inch MacBook Pro. And I hate it. I always end up hitting it when I don't want to, and it brings up Siri and all of that. And it's, I'm just not into that, right? But with this, it's kind of back to basics for me, uh, and probably for a lot of people as well. So, you know, I have one of the first MacBook Airs that they put out. Um, <clears throat> and so it really takes me back to that. So let's, get to, let's talk about the performance of this. And so the first thing I did was I set up a Final Cut Pro. And so inside of Final Cut Pro, I loaded up a 30 minute video. It's a video that I posted on the channel a while back, but I just loaded it up in the Final Cut. I set my settings to where it wouldn't use the data on the laptop. Um, so I kind of did it over the network and then I did it on the laptop itself to see if that really gave any difference. And so the thing about the MacBook Air is it doesn't have a whole lot of space for the base model. The new one's got more, um, but this one's only got 128 gigs. And so when you're talking about moving over maybe a five gig to 10 gig video that's only 1080p, uh, you can't really do a whole lot of those unless you've got external storage. And so I, I loaded it over and looked at the times to see how, it would, how long it took to import, how long it took to render, um, how long it took to share, and I even looked at how it did with an eGPU. And so for the eGPU test, that's gonna be using a Razer Core X, which you can find down below in the links as well as an RX 570 4 gig, which you can find down in the links below as well. And so whenever I did the import for a 30 minute video at 1080p, it took two minutes and 25 seconds. And so it took two and a half minutes for the video to actually import before I could even get to work with it. And so after it imported, the timeline and everything was, was pretty smooth. I mean, it wasn't a bad experience. I'm um, trying to edit on the timeline make sure that everything, it was, like I said, it was very smooth. Adding transitions were okay. Um, adding some titles and things like that, those were okay. Doing color grading though, doing um, a mass color grading on a 30 minute video clip. Uh, it actually, it got a little bit hairy there for a minute um, with the MacBook Air. And what I mean by that is that it wasn't as smooth while that was actually adding and doing the color grading. And so that's where it started to slow down. On the initial render for the MacBook Air with this 30 minute video clip, for the initial render, 
it took about 15 minutes. And so it took 15 minutes to render what I had done to this um, video clip, the 30 minute video clip. And that was without using any GPU. So it took, like I said, 15 minutes. It's not that bad of a time to wait. However, if you want a smooth experience, it's probably a big time to wait actually, right? And so whenever I went to share it, just using the MacBook Air itself, it took 45 minutes to share uh, this 30 minute video clip that was done in the Apple Pro Res 422. And so it took 45 minutes and during this 45 minutes, you weren't gonna be doing anything else on the system. It was completely bogged down. You weren't going to do another thing. And so that was kind of disappointing. I mean, I didn't have really high hopes for it, but given that, it, it, did, it took forever. Now, if you don't have anything to do and you can just, you know, set it to share and then walk off and do chores, cook dinner or something like that, then it's not that bad. You know, if, if, if that's what you've got as a MacBook Air, then that's what you've got. You can go ahead and use it and Final Cut Pro works great on it um, for that, right? But if time is money, then that's a long time to wait for something to export. Whenever I added the eGPU, the RX 574 gig with the Razer Core X, the render time went down to five minutes. Now the import time was still the same length of time. However, that render time with the color grading and transitions, it took about a third of the time. As well as the export time, the export time, which this really shook me and it may have just been a mistake, but I ran it twice and the, the export time with it was also about a third. It's about 15 minutes uh, to export it using the RX 570. And so I think that really just goes to show how well Final Cut Pro can utilize the GPU. Um, so that's actually not bad, but when you start talking about adding in an external GPU like that. You're talking about $300 for the Razer Core X. Then you're talking about about $110 for the RX 570. Or if you was to go something higher, like a 5500 XT, then you're looking at about 200 or 5700, which is, you know, 329-ish, 5700 XT is about 400. You know, you start talking about quite a bit of money. And then at the same time, if you've got just the base model and you don't upgrade the storage in it, you're gonna to have to get an external drive. And you're probably gonna to wanna to get a USB dock as well. So when you start talking about USB docks, the one I have is the Cal Digit TS3 Plus. It's about 250 bucks, but it also can power the laptop as well as provide Thunderbolt 3. Got that hooked into a five terabyte Thunderbolt uh, external drive. And so you start adding all these things together and you've got a very, very expensive system very expensive to just do content creation. And so if you don't have those things though, it's not gonna be good. You need to have an external drive. Uh, during one of the exports or the shares of this, I actually hit the limit of what the MacBook Air could store. And so then I had to go through and delete everything and restart everything, all of my tests. Um, because if you don't know, exporting or sharing something in Apple ProRes, they're massive files. You know, they're, they're just massive. And so when you take into account the stuff that you have to install, the OS and everything, you don't really have a whole lot of, of wiggle room and you're probably looking at about 70 to 80 gigs of usable storage on the base model. This is 2018, now the 2020, you're gonna have a little bit more, you know, it's doubled. So <clears throat> let's talk about programming on it. And so my first programming job, whenever I was an intern in college, I done completely on a MacBook Air. So I did all of my web development on a MacBook Air and it was a great experience. And that's the same with this one, right? So this 2018 model, it is great for web development. If you're doing web development and you need to make sure that you're getting your colors on point, or if you're doing some web design, it's perfect for that, it's great. It's lightweight, it's easy to travel, battery lasts all day long. And so you can get a lot of work done with it. And of course, whenever you use this MacBook Air for something like that, then you also get the added features of it being built on a Unix system. And so you have the terminal, which really helps if you want to use, you know, PHP or MySQL, um, as well as, you know, have your own web server running on it. You can do all those things and that's what it's great for. And so using it for web development 
was was fantastic. Uh, it was very enjoyable to do that. Also, did a little bit of Android and Xcode on this, and so I opened up Android Studio. I didn't do any coding. I just wanted to see how it did with the emulation of an Android phone. Same thing for Xcode. I wanted to see how it done with the emulation of an iPhone. And so when you boot that up on here, and I'm gonna actually show the footage, this footage should be up right now, of how slow it gets. And so when you start up the emulation for one of these phones, for it, whether it be Android or iOS, the system takes a huge hit. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't do so well. And so you can see in the footage that it gets very choppy. It takes forever for the Android emulation to start. And once it does start, it's pretty, like I said, pretty slow, pretty laggy. Um, the emulation doesn't work too well. Um, it's, it's just a bad experience. And so I had a little bit of extra hope for Xcode, maybe thinking that emulating an iOS device, since they're both Mac or Apple, would be better. And it was the same story. It took a long time for the iOS device to start up. And then once it did start up, uh, using the menu or trying to do anything like that was very choppy, it was slow, it was laggy. And so it's not built for that. Uh, the MacBook Air is, is not built for that. You need a quad core and extra RAM, really. So a dual core, eight gigs of RAM, don't do it. Quad core, 16 gigs of RAM, go for it. And so that's gonna bring us to the conclusion of the MacBook Air 2018. And my conclusion is this, is that if you are not a professional content creator and you just wanna learn Final Cut Pro, you wanna to learn to do photography, things like that, it's an excellent choice. However, make sure to either A, get an external drive, or B, beef up the internal drive on it. So make sure you get, an, get more storage on the internal drive. If you are a developer, if you're doing maybe C++ or Java, uh, JavaScript, Python, or web development in general, go for it. If you need something that's light, that the battery is gonna last all day long, and that you can use and get a lot of work done with a great screen, it's perfect for that. I mean, it really is. Something that's gonna last all day, it's gonna last a long time as far as longevity of the device. It's got a nice screen. Like I said, for web development, it is perfect. It is a perfect web development machine. If you're doing something a little bit more stout, something like Android development um, or iOS development, I would go for MacBook Pro all day long. Just forget about the MacBook Air. Just go ahead and get the MacBook Pro. And of course, if you're a student, get the MacBook Air. I mean, save yourself some money. Listen, you, you don't need a MacBook Pro to, uh, to write your biology papers. If you're a CIS or a CS student, listen, you don't need a MacBook Pro to write the stuff that they're gonna have you writing in class. Trust me, I did it. Uh, you know, I used the MacBook Air throughout my entire college career and I've got a CIS degree, took all the programming classes. Trust me, you don't need it. Save some money, get the MacBook Air. And so that's gonna leave us with this last tip, this last tip, and that is practice social distancing, stay safe. And as always, have a great day. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for some more. Look, we're gonna be looking at the 2020 Mac Mini content creation setup that I've got. I'm gonna be talking about it. We're gonna look at some numbers and some charts for it as well. And talking about how it does with an RX 570 versus an RX 5500 XT and what kind of gains I was able to get with those.